Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps build the channel. You know what else does? Tell your friends about the best wine show anywhere. That's what helps. All right. So welcome to Freestyle Friday, where I get to do what I want. So it's time for more how the sausage or wine is made videos. No BS, just straight talk about wine and how it's made. I'm going to strip away the romance and pull back the curtain, if you will, be that anonymous magic magician that shows you how the magic trick is made or done. Not to put down how the wine is made or shame anyone, this is just reality. Last time we covered what organic farming entails. Today we're going to define organic wine. This will be a shorter episode, or it should be, since we covered conventional winemaking a few weeks ago. So there's no need to rehash all of that here. It's all about the labeling laws regarding organic wine. So for a wine to be organic of any kind, it must first use 100% certified organic grapes. While winemakers, well, sorry, while wine growers can certainly practice organic wine growing, if the vineyard isn't certified, then they can't use the different types of organic labeling. When it comes to legally defined organic farming, the US and EU lead the world in regulations. Essentially, every other country in the world either mirrors these, the US and the EU or doesn't have specific laws regarding organic farming. Regardless of the country, a third party will always be the certifying body. In countries without organic farming regulations, the third party will do the certification for either the US or the EU. They can also do it for both. You'll find a lot of companies that will do the certification all around the world. In most cases, you'll see the logo or at least the name of the company that certified the grapes. The certification can also include the winery itself. The thing is, each is treated separately, but are still connected. Without organic grapes, you can't make organic wine. Kinda. Okay, let's start looking at all the legal stuff when it comes to organic wines. The U.S. has some of the strictest laws regarding organic products. There are four tiers to an organic product. 100% organic, organic, made with organic, and organic ingredients. The general rules governing each of these categories are as follow. For 100% organic, it must be 100% certified organic ingredients and processing aids. Must use organic yeast. All ingredients comply with the national list of allowed and prohibited substances and organic with certain exceptions. Must be certified via third party. No GMOs at any point in the process. Display of the USDA logo is optional. Uh, for sulfites, there are no sulfites statement required may say no added sulfites. Sulfites must not exceed 10 parts per million and be certified. All right, for just organic, 100% organic, certified organic grapes. Standard says minimum 95% organic ingredients, but for a product like wine, which is just grapes, it still must be 100% of the grapes. I know there are other ingredients in a wine other than grapes, but the USDA considers them processing aids and not necessarily in the final product with a few exceptions. Must use organic yeast. All ingredients must comply with the national list of allowed and prohibited substances and organic within, with, with certain exceptions and not exceed 5%, excluding salt and water. Not really applicable in wine, I guess, I don't know. All right, they must be certified via a third party. No GMOs at any point in the process. The display of a USDA logo is optional. When it comes to sulfites, no sulfite statements are uh, required. It may say no added sulfites. Sulfites must not exceed 10 parts per million and be certified. All right, made with organic. Now that is at least 70% certified organic ingredients, but it still is 100% certified organic grapes. Yeah, this is where it gets kind of confusing. The label is trying to show the grapes are 100% organic, but the rest of the wine processing is not 100% organic. All non-agricultural ingredients comply with the national list of allowed and prohibited substances and organic. 
with certain exceptions and not exceed 30%. No certification required on the label. However, if a third party is used, it must show the complete name of the third party. No requirement of organic yeast. No requirement concerning GMOs. Grapes are not included in this though. Maximum of 100 parts per million for sulfites. This is very likely the reason for this category. If everything else qualified to be 100% or just organic, then you have to have less than 10 parts per million. It has to have a sulfite declaration, so it must say contain sulfites. This has been U.S. law since 1988. All products, not just wine, must have this phrase if they, can, if they have at least 10 parts per million of sulfites. No USDA logo or other organic logo allowed. All right, then you have organic ingredients. There's no specified percentage of our certified organic grapes. No minimum organic ingredients, including grapes. May contain a list of ingredients that specifies which are organic. So ingredients. So something like organic Merlot grapes, then Malbec grapes, tartaric acid, sulfur dioxide. So the front label states blend of 70% Merlot and then 30% Malbec. 65% organic ingredients. No certification. Since this doesn't comply with the previous three categories, the USDA didn't specify about a third party certification. I'd imagine if the winery was going to do it, they would have to make sure the full name was on the back label, like made with organic requires. No requirement of organic yeast. No requirement concerning GMO, including grapes. But like I said last time, I've never heard of GMO grapes being used to make wine. It's certainly possible. A maximum of 350 parts per million for sulfites. This is actually for all wines uh, than the previous three categories. So all wines made in the US is a maximum of 350 parts per million. Sulfite declaration is required, so it must say contains sulfites. No USDA logo or other organic logo is allowed. All right, so the bottom line here is that 100% organic, organic and made with organic all require 100% certified organic grapes. It's just the rest of the winemaking process needs to comply with being organic along with the amount of sulfites in the finished wine. And then the sulfite statements are required. The last category is kind of meaningless other than a winery being able to show that they have some organic grapes and other organic grapes or other organic ingredients if they so choose. Now the EAU is much easier to understand. It's either organic or it's not. Here are the requirements. 100% certified organic grapes. The law is greater than or equal to 95% certified organic with the remaining 5% strictly controlled. That remaining may not be a non-organic form of the organic ingredients. Same as the US, therefore 100% organic grapes. Must use certified organic yeast. No GMOs allowed, grapes or processing aids. Organic processing aids are preferred but not required. If no organic version is available, then a non-organic aid is allowed. Certain types of enological practices such as concentration by cooling, the de-alcoholization, the elimination of sulfur dioxide by physical process, electrodialysis, and the use of cation exchangers are prohibited. The phrase quote, should, should be excluded, appears first, but later on the EU law explicitly forbids these practices. Must be certified via a third-party agent. The EU organic logo is required. Remember, it's optional in the US, or the USDA logo. If a wine is labeled made from organic grapes, then it cannot use the EU organic logo. This is the same for the US regarding the USDA logo. All right, for sulfites, only for dry wines. Sweet wines have different levels that I didn't think were important for this episode. All right, for dry wines, less than two grams per liter of residual sugar. Red is a maximum of 100 parts per million. For a white or rosé, it's 150 parts per million. Now for dry wines that are greater than two grams per liter and less than five grams per liter of RS, the Sulfites for reds is 120 parts per million, and for white and rosé, 170 parts per million. For dry wines that are greater than or equal to 5 grams per liter of RS, red is 170 parts per million, and white and rosé is 220 parts per million. Sulfite declaration is required, so it contains sulfites for wines above 10 parts per million. 
This has been EU law since 2005. Canada resembles the U.S. closely with some provinces having additional or modified requirements. For other countries, they either use a sustainable type of labeling or don't have a law regarding organics at all. In this case, you'll see third-party certifications of being organic. I created a chart for most of the wine producing world, U.S., EU, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Argentina, Chile, and Canada. It was helpful in making these episodes and see what organic actually means in these countries. In all cases in the U.S. and the EU, for an imported wine, as long as it meets the requirements for the U.S. or EU regarding organic wine labeling, then that label can show the same thing as a domestically made wine shows on its label, so based upon country of origin. Both the U.S. and EU have an equivalency agreement. Effectively, this means both recognize the organic products of the other, including wine. For the most part, a wine that meets the USDA requirements can use similar labeling in the EU, including made with organic grapes, since the USDA doesn't allow their logo to be used with it. If the wine comes from a country other than the US or an EU member country, it can also show that country's or third party's organic logo as long as everything else is compliant. In other words, if a wine from, say, Argentina and is properly certified, it can show the appropriate logos in either place. So yeah, it's a bit confusing when it comes to organic wine and organic products in general. Just because the word organic appears anywhere on the label doesn't mean the wine is 100% organic. You have to see what kind of organic the wine is. So I can have a 10% organic Merlot, for instance, and the rest of the grapes aren't organic, everything else I do in the winery isn't organic, and I can max out the sulfites. For the record, even at 350 parts per million, you're not getting that wine headache. But that's for a future episode. Oh, and it's coming for sure. All right, pop quiz time. Nah, just kidding. This is a lot to take in, and you may need to watch this a few times. Hell, I reviewed this information probably a dozen times, and I was still refining it till the end. It's easy to misinterpret what these laws say. So when it comes to the winemaking process, essentially as long as any processing aids are organic, they are allowed. This includes things like bentonite, calcium carbonate, diatomaceous earth, enzymes. They must be derived from edible, non-toxic plants, non-pathogenic fungi, or non-pathogenic bacteria. You can also use malic acid, sodium carbonate or soda ash, tartaric acid, yeast. Non-organic is allowed provided that there isn't an organic yeast commercially available. All right, non-organic things that can be used in winemaking are mostly associated with cleaning equipment or other things in a winery. However, sulfur dioxide is specifically mentioned and that, and that the concentration can't exceed or doesn't exceed 100 parts per million. Also on the list for non-organically produced agricultural products allowed include a lot of juice extracts for color, including grape juice color, grape skin extract color. Both must come from vitis vinifera or the grapes we use for wine. So if I read this correctly, then mega purple is allowed. I, I talked about this in my conventional winemaking episode before this one. In case you didn't see it or don't remember what it is, mega purple is a grape juice concentrate used to bolster or enhance a variety of characteristics of many wines under 20 bucks. On the surface, it seems to qualify as an allowed product, but I might be reading this wrong. There are also a long list of synthetics that are allowed for organic crop production. For the most part, this list seems to be for agriculture other than for wine grapes, but technically, if it's something that can benefit the vineyard, then it's allowed. The point here is that organic farming has its own wiggle room to accommodate reality. This is not to say that organic wine growers are doing, are doing any of these things, just that it's allowed up to a point. For the most part, an organic wine will typically use organic processing aids, unless there's something that is crucial to the making of the wine. And even then, whatever doesn't qualify as organic isn't much and will fall within that 5 to 30% of wiggle room depending on the type of non-organic it is. So will the organic wine taste any better? I've referred to this before, but I'll reiterate, no. Well, it's hard to quantify in my opinion. It depends on if that organic wine's production varies significantly from a wine that's made conventionally or even 100% certified organic grapes, but something in the winemaking process disqualified it from being more than just made from organic grapes. They may taste different, 
They may not to the average person. Whether one tastes better than the other will come down to personal preference. And a lot of that can be influenced by a lot of factors. If you watched my great Cali Cab Shootout episode where I blinded six Cali Cabs, you saw that in action. I had erroneously decided what a particular wine was solely based on the faded color, and boy was I ever wrong. I'd had that wine the next day, and it didn't taste as good as I'd remembered. And it was the one I had ranked the highest. It had acted more like it should, but in reality, it was oxidized more than it should have been. It was a flawed bottle. The wine that I had thought it was, uh, or th th that was oxidized, ended up being the wine that was ranked last. So that was when I looked at the when I looked at the color, I had made already made my decision, or had a I thought you know this was the most expensive wine because that wine was in a half bottle and half bottles age faster. That was a big mistake. All right. Um, so I ended up ranking that wine, the, the actual wine that was in the half bottle, I ended up ranking that last. So talk about embarrassing. So the two gentlemen who assisted me uh, for that episode, and then I finished that bottle. Uh, did it get better? I mean, the, the, the bottle that ranked last? Uh, yeah. Um, but we all knew what was, but we, but we all knew what we were drinking. So it wasn't immediately better though. It took some time. So who knows if I'd given it a fair shot in that situation. Given a long decanting, it may have ended up on the top. So here's the thing. And I wrote all this before I had actually watched the tasting. So when I watched that tasting and I talked about this in the episode. So I had my, so I'm just going to summarize. I had had a flawed system. I should have written down all my notes because I was trying to remember six wines worth of tasting notes in my head. And over time I was messing things up. If I'd written everything down, if you look at my notes, it was pretty clear that the most expensive wine was the best wine. I mean, in quality. Whether I liked it the best or not might have been a different story, but it was the best quality. That wine that I, that I erroneously thought was the most expensive should have been thrown out for being a flawed bottle. Nothing against the winery, it's just this happens. Occasionally, bottles get are flawed. All right, so back to the script. All right, the point here is that conventionally made wine can be fantastic. So can organic wines, and both can be bad, or anything in between. One other thing to remember from last time is that organic wine growing can add to the cost of farming by up to 20 to 30 percent. And this will get added to the final price of the wine. Add in any extra expense of using organic aids in the winery, and the wine will be more expensive than the conventional equivalent. But not always. I've reviewed and have plain, have just plain drank organic wines 100% organic that are under 15 bucks. Matter of fact, they're kind of near me right now. So where are these wines, you know, where these wines come from have a huge impact on the final price. Additionally, if a winery is totally dedicated to organics from vineyard to bottle and makes a lot of wine, then they can drive down costs. I can't say for sure that it'll equal the cost of conventional wines, but it will at least be a lot closer in price. Organic wines and organic products in general are great. Uh, but too often, these are small production products with which higher prices and higher costs to make them. Plus, there seems to be what you could call an organic tax on these products, which raises the retail even higher. And not everyone can afford them. So what's a person to do? Well, you know, organic products have become a luxury item for so many things. And this is not a new thing. With wine, there are wineries making commitments to do it on a large scale, and we are seeing it in other industries like beer, where you have an organic version selling for almost the same price as their non-organic version. So it can be done. They just need to figure it out. Okay, enough about organic. Next week, we tackle biodynamic farming. For sure, we'll dispel some myths about it and give it a major reality check. They got some voodoo going on with that bio. For now, relax with your favorite glass of wine. I hope you got value from this episode. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and then tell all your friends. And until next time, just drink some wine.